Wednesday, so you know what that means. Pop Dust presents hour number two. Special thanks to the Trues for locking down hour number one. I'm your host, Decent, and my guest at this time is a burly bearded balladeer from the Boogie Down Bronx. A little region for that ass. He just released his new single, Are We, over the summer. It is a heater, but it's here to stay to get us through the colder months. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, my brother, Brian Durier. What's going on, peeps? Hey, man. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me, man. So, to give a little backstory on me and Brian's relationship, Brian is actually really, really good friends with somebody I like to consider a younger brother. Shout out to Rudy. And Brian used to come by when me and the big homies were making music and he used to come around and sing. I'm like, oh, doing your thing, you know, keep working at it. And lo and behold, he kept working at it and now he's probably one of the most acclaimed soul funk singers in the NYC area, am I right? Do a little song, song. I, don't, I don't like to toot my own horn, but like, I, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just out here. I'm putting a little sauce on it, but, <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, man, it's amazing everything that you've accomplished thus far, and to watch you grow up as not just a man but as an artist has been a joy for me. And hey, I'm excited to have you on Pop Dust for this, man. Here, man. So give a little people, give the people a little bit about yourself. You know, Name, address, uh, pay stubs. Social? You want social too? I mean, I was gonna say blood type, but we can do blood social. type. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> social. I know the blood type. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I'm, my name is Brian Durier. I simply go by Durier. Um, I'm from the Bronx, New York, Highbridge section. Uh, hey. Cardi B used to live across the street from me. Um, it's a uh, it's a very wonderful place. Uh, I am a singer songwriter. I started off as a spoken word poet back in high school. Um, I know Rudy from football. We used to play football together for four years, and uh, nobody saw this coming <laughs> at all. Um, so yeah, man, I'm just I'm just out here t- sharing my stories through my music, and um, hoping that somebody feels it the same way I do, and just trying to spread joy and love. You know. So tell us a little bit about that song because it has like a very up tempo summery vibe. I remember when. You sent it to me, I was like, oh, okay, this is what we doing. Yeah. Um, are we making love? I had to, I had to question myself. Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. Are we maybe. making love? Are we having fun? Maybe we are. We, I mean, we're on this couch. Then my girlfriend told me to shut up because Netflix was on. So. Okay. Yeah, but tell us a little bit about <laughs> the song conception and how everything came together because you also have a video out for it. The song stemmed from, uh, from basically like a situation that I was in, you know. Um, when you when you're when you're out on the prowl, sometimes things get a little serious. <laughs> but not even serious, but you think they're serious. You're kind of playing the game. You, you, things start looking and smelling like a relationship, but then they're really not. And you got a question, like, what are we? Are we are we making love? Or are we just having fun? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give, so, a, give the little temperature check. Yeah, exactly. You just gotta you gotta like it's it's like when you when you bake a pie. You don't want it too hot. You also don't want it too cold. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta check. You gotta yeah. dip the pinky in a little bit. You just gotta know where things are at, and um, that, that's where I was in, uh, in in the situation that I was in, and I feel like that's a situation that a lot of people are in, whether like whether it's it's during the summer, during the winter. Because I actually wrote that song in the winter. Mm. <laughs> so, cuffing season. Yeah, cuffing <laughs> season. Where I was just like, I need somebody to cuddle. It's kind of cool. So, what are some more of your inspirations outside of you know the more punk based scene that you grew up in? Um, I mean, my, my mom and my dad, like, they, like, my dad especially, when, when he was around, he, uh, he listened to a lot of, like, like, a lot of, like, soul, like, old school soul, like, uh, Bill Withers, Al Green, um, Curtis Mayfield, and, like, my mother, and just coming, my mother and my sister, you know, coming from a Puerto Rican household, you listen to Mark Anthony and all, all the Sacedos from, from, from Puerto Rico and all that stuff, so it's like, I was surrounded by a rich environment of, uh, of like just just music that came from a place, mm-hmm. and then uh, me and my sister shared a room while she was in high school. And in high school, she was listening to a lot of like Drew Hill, um, Avant, Usher, um, and then I got I got exposed to like music Soul Child, which like honestly he he's one of the people like his earlier stuff is what inspired me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to sing. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, just a friend, you know what I'm saying? Like th- th- those those kind of songs like kind of inspired the way that I write. Bill Withers, too, man, the way he writes is amazing, and, and I'm, I, I listen to his music, and I'm just like, 
he has a very iconic voice, but it's not a voice where he's like doing runs throughout the whole song. He's like speaking what's on his mind and what's in his heart, and that, that's what I want my music to be like. Yeah. So we we often say this, you know, and it sounds super super cliche, but where yeah. we're, we're from, music in a sense saved our lives. Yeah, it did, it did, it did, in, in more ways than one. So I'm, I'm I'm very I'm very proud from where I'm from. I'm very proud of my upbringing. I'm very proud of like who helped create this, um, and I'm just happy to to like share my art with, with other people and, and hope to like see them get the release that I get whenever I write a song, whenever I'm on stage. Awesome, awesome. It's just very, very fulfilling to see that there is this very heavy scene that's growing. Yeah, man. You know, there's a lot of artists, and not just on, you know, a underground level, but even to a degree when it comes to mainstream. Like yeah. You have the success of Cardi B, yep. you know, of course, Fat Joe's been a staple for yeah, yeah, us, yeah. you know, but seeing Remy doing what she's doing, even down to like, you know, Jesus and Mero, yeah, you know, yeah, man. French Montana, so yeah. it's like, in a sense, like, we're, we're all over the place when it comes to, you know, the creative aspect of music right now, and yeah. being from the Bronx, I know that you know, you're super, super happy about that, and it's also super cool that you yourself are carving out your own lane your own legacy to kind of help bring the Bronx to prominence as far as creators try go. To, man. Man, you're doing, man. I try to. Yeah, I, I mean, everywhere, everywhere I go, like the first person I hit up is Amadis. I'm like, bro, I need a new Bronx shirt. I'm going, I'm going here. Oh man, I'm going, I'm going there. Like I remember the first time I went out to Oakland, I did a show out there with a with a friend of mine, and uh, the, I had on a I had on a Bronx native shirt, and somebody was just like, yo, you from Brooklyn, right? And I was just like, nah. But the shirt <laughs> says. The shirt says <laughs> Bronx native, and then he tagged me on Instagram, my man from Brooklyn, and I had to do Bronx, Bronx native, native, bro. But you know what the funny thing is, like we laugh and joke about it, but people do not get the concept of boroughs. Yeah, they, they they don't. But it's 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 like, but it's also like people don't expect art to come from the Bronx for some reason. There's this stigma of the borough, like we're, like that we're super rough and we're angry and. I mean, but, 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 but. I mean, I mean, then yeah. listen, listen <laughs> to the outside, yes. When you when you're there and you experience the art and you experience the love that and just the pride of a Bronxite, the culture and the culture, there's so much culture there, and, and people don't realize that. Like it's not it's not about like like yes yes we're 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 tough, but we're not angry. Yeah. We're tough. We're a tough crowd. Yeah, but we're not angry people. We're, we're actually very loving and. Uh, I mean, you look at. The- Conditions that we go on. I hate to make yeah. this a, a Bronx episode. So we're gonna wrap this up really soon. But <laughs> we, we come from you know being of course congressional district, you yeah, know. unhealthiest. Yeah, yeah, you know. So it's like, of course, those defenses are up. Yeah. But once you come and they, like you say, you experience the people, you experience the culture, and you get to interact with the natives, you see there's a lot of pride and a lot of heritage. You yeah. know, not just amongst the different ethnicities, but just amongst the people that are from there. Yeah, because yeah. In a certain way, we are kind of you know disregarded and left out in a lot of conversations when it comes to creativity these mm-hmm. days. It's like we get, you know, we created hip hop and like we feel like everybody just pretty much took it and ran with it and don't give us the due respect that we created it. But I'm just happy that we're in a place now where people get to see this more to us than just Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Zoo. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, Yankee Stadium in the Bronx Zoo and the Botanical Garden, you know, like just all very great places. All very great places. <laughs> Love the places. I actually have a really good friend of mine that works at the Bronx Zoo, but like there, there's so much more, and like that's why I'm, I'm I'm happy about the Bronx Night Market. The Bronx Night Market has been great. Different types of food, like just different types of music, awesome DJs, awesome people that come through, um, and it, it's 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 been a great experience, man. Just, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. So give us a little bit of backstory about this song before you get into it. Okay, so this the song is called Growing Pains, and um, it may sound like a love song. It, and like I try to write my songs as open ended as I can, but I actually wrote this song because. Uh, I have a, I have a group of friends of mine that um, that I've known them since grade school. Mm-hmm. We're all in the same chat. We, we we contact each other all the time. We see each other like once or twice a year. Um, but uh, like this song, I wrote this song because I wanted them to know that no matter where they are, no matter who we become, no matter like what what type of issues we may have, the love is always there. And if you need me, I'll always be there. Oh man, like I'm already feeling that right now. You know, that's like, definitely something I'm relating to right now, <laughs> being an adult. But yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what do you have coming up next, man? You got any shows, any videos dropped in project? Um, this the single "Grown Pain" should be out like 
hopefully either in December or January to start the new year. We'll see. Um, but coming up soon, I have a huge show in the Bronx. I, I actually get to play on the stage where a lot of the, the guys who inspired me to play played on. Oh, I see. And, I'm, and I actually get to share the stage with one of the guys that inspired me. So I'm going to be playing at FLC in the Bronx. It's, it's in Throg's Neck. It's going to be all over, like... All over Instagram, all over Facebook, I'll post some stuff. I actually have a So Far Sounds tonight. <laughs> I'm doing that tonight. <laughs> Running over there after this. Um, and uh, I have a few events here and there, so just like follow me, and, and it'll be uh, like the next big show is going to be FLC. Awesome, awesome. Where can people reach you at on social, man? It's uh, at Durier Music. That Spell is, it out for them. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's uh, D U R I E U X Music. I'm pretty sure most of you know how to spell music. Um, if not, there's spell check. Um, uh, but yeah, at Durie Music, get everything. Awesome, awesome, bro. Yeah. Thank you for stopping Lisa, by, thank man. Thank you so much for of having course, me, bro. Of course, of course. Once again, are we? Song, video, out now. Yes. Make sure you guys get it on all digital streaming platforms, and Growing Pain should be out, and once it's out, we'll make sure that we get that up for you people. But thanks again for stopping by, Durie. My name is Decent. You guys have been privy to another episode of Pop Dust Presents. Shout out to Trues and Brent Butler for locking down the first hour. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website at popdust.com.